Hey there, friends. My name is Desiree, AKA Mama Friendly, and I'm trying something a little different this year when it comes to our homeschooling. All of the main information is gonna be found in the very first video of this series, which I'll link up here in case you've missed it. But the Cliff's Notes version is that I've been homeschooling my son his entire life. He's nine years old and on the autism spectrum, he has nonverbal autism along with a few other medical diagnoses. My son also has a complete and absolute undying love for all things Disney, much like his mama. So this year I thought it would be fun to give our unit studies a little bit of a Disney twist. So every two weeks this year we're going to start a new unit study based on a Disney ride, movie, character, etc. We're going to be doing our academic work around that theme, but also at least one cooking activity and at least one art activity. So in these videos, I wanna show you guys some of the things that we do to fit the theme. And I have a Pinterest board pertaining to each of the themes. And so along with every single one of these videos, there's going to be a link in the description box to that particular themes Pinterest board. So make sure that you check those out because I am only showing you some of the things that we're getting into every week, but the board is going to have more activities and also activities for kids of different ages and different abilities. So with all that being said, let's get into our theme. So I wanted to show you what we're reading this week. I did not realize until we started this um, project, I guess, that Mary Poppins was actually a series of books. So there's the original book right here, but then here's another three. And I wanna say there was maybe two or three more in the series. So I actually got these for myself because now that I know they exist, I have to do a deep dive and read all of them. I believe the movie is a combination of the first three books in the series. I could be wrong on that. However, for my son, this is probably a little much, so we're going to be reading this book right here. And I love the little golden books. We have a very large collection. As you can see, I haven't even opened this one yet. But this is the one that we're going to be reading. And I'm going to have this one linked along with the set I just showed you down below in the description box in case you want to get them for yourself or for your own kiddos. It's time to show you where you can find Mary Poppins all across the world on Disney properties. This first video I'm showing you is one of many that I will have in a playlist that I will link down below in the description box. One of the places where you can find Mary Poppins along with a few of her British based friends is at 1900 Park Fair, the character meal at the Grand Floridian. And this is also where you can find Cinderella some nights. So uh, make sure you check and see what's going on on any given meal. I'm not sure if it's that maybe one meets at breakfast and one meets at dinner. But Mary Poppins can definitely be found here if you want to make sure that you don't miss your opportunity to meet her. Disneyland Paris seems to have a pretty big thing for Mary Poppins. There's actually a springtime show that's led by her, and I believe they do this every year. I'm not sure if the situation might have changed because of COVID, but you can see they even have the little carousel horses here from the movie, and it's a whole like musical entertainment situation. So there she is with Bert and with all her little friends. So this is a cool show. Um, I haven't seen it myself personally because I've never been to Paris, but you can watch it in the video that I'm linking down below. And Disneyland Paris also has a year-round Mary Poppins Step in Time street show that they perform on Main Street or whatever their version of Main Street is. It almost seems like a, a Dapper Dan situation or like the... Oh my goodness, I always forget what the performers that are on the trolley are called. If you know what they're called, let me know in the comments down below, please. But um, you see there's people dancing right here and we've got Mary Poppins and Bert waiting off on the side. And uh, again, very cool, something that we don't get to see here in the States. So it's nice to see Mary Poppins getting love somewhere in the world. Now this is something very recent. Uh, Molly from All Ears actually just put this video out maybe a month or so ago. Citrico's, which is a restaurant that's been at Walt Disney World for a bit now, recently rethemed to a Mary Poppins theme, I'm assuming because of the new release of the movie, The Mary Poppins Returns, which is a sequel. So I'm not sure 
if you can meet her there just yet. I don't think so because of COVID, but it is themed as far as the decor and there have been menu changes as well. So now we have a full Mary Poppins experience at Walt Disney World. And speaking of a Mary Poppins experience at Walt Disney World, it was announced a couple years ago at D23, which is the Disney news convention basically, that along with that Mary Poppins Returns, we were going to get a Mary Poppins attraction in the UK Pavilion at Epcot. It was recently announced that the Mary Poppins attraction was going to be postponed indefinitely, but I want to say that they've gone ahead and just flat out canceled it now. So that's a little sad. I was looking forward to seeing what they were going to do there because the UK does not actually have any attractions right now. But um, yeah, who knows? Maybe they'll change their minds later. Maybe once, you know, everything bounces back from COVID, we might end up getting our Mary Poppins attraction after all. For now, though, Mary Poppins is one of the characters that you can sometimes see doing the distance to meet and greets at Magic Kingdom at the train station. You can see her going up the steps right there. If you're in Disneyland, you can also see her on Main Street. You can also see her right there as part of the Fantasyland Friends Cavalcade at the Magic Kingdom. And as always, you can count on seeing Mary Poppins at the UK Pavilion in Epcot. I'm actually almost embarrassed to call this a recipe because it is so simple, but the payoff is going to be so, so cool. So I'm going to make this gluten and dairy free as usual, but again, very, very easy to adapt one way or the other. As you can see, I've got a box of vanilla cake mix and a box of frosting or a container of frosting. And you can use any flavor you like. I'm using a cream cheese frosting. It's obviously not regular cream cheese because it's dairy free, but I'm using that and I'm using a vanilla cake in case the cake color kind of peeks through the coating but like i said theoretically you could use whatever flavor you'd like and i'm going to be using these enjoy life white chocolate chips as a coating you could also use candy melts i'm choosing not to use those because again they have dairy but you might have guessed we're making cake balls not just any cake balls we're going to roll them in sugar when we're all done and we're going to serve them on little spoons and you guessed it, we're making a spoonful of sugar. So all you need is your box of cake mix and whatever ingredients that calls for. You're gonna prepare the cake as listed on the package directions. Once the cake is finished baking, make sure to let it cool completely. So we're actually going to bake this before one therapy and we're going to come back to it after another one. Now that it's completely cool, we're going to take our canister of frosting. We're going to crumble the cake up as fine as possible and we're going to mix our canister of frosting into the cake crumbs. Once the frosting is fully combined with our cake crumbs, we should get a very pliable, almost cake dough. So you can make the cake balls themselves whatever size you want. I'm trying to make them as uniform as possible while also keeping in mind that I want them to fit on a spoon. So that's about the size I'm going for is on a spoon size. Now this may or may not be necessary, but I did chill mine for about an hour just to make sure that they would really hold their shape when it came time to dip them in the melted chocolate. And again, I'm melting the chocolate. You could do it in the microwave. I did it on a double boiler because I wasn't sure how this particular brand would react in the microwave, but whatever is easiest for you, if you're using candy melts, follow the directions on the package. And we're just going to roll around our chilled cake balls in the chocolate until they're completely coated. If you wanted to do this like for a party, you could get plastic spoons and like put a little well of chocolate inside the spoon or even dip the whole spoon in chocolate, put the cake ball right on top and then just sprinkle it with coarse sugar. Perfect. Really, really cute for serving. 
We're not gonna go through all that trouble. I just wanted to show you a couple so you can get the general idea, but really we're just gonna eat the cake balls as they are, and they are so good. All right, friends, I'm very excited about this art project this week. We're gonna make a kite, just like the one that they fly at the end of Mary Poppins. So I have a very large piece of green construction paper here. I went with green because that's the color of their kite. I also have a pack of streamers. I have some scotch tape and we have some wooden dowels. I'm gonna have the streamers and the dowels linked down below. And we're going to use all of this to make our very own kite. It's not particularly windy here today, so I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to actually demonstrate how it works, but I'm excited to make it all the same. I'm gonna start by bringing the corners of the paper in like this, almost like you're gonna make an, a paper airplane, so we can start to get the shape of the kite. And I'm gonna do the same down here. Let me see how I can make, maybe this paper is too big because I want a, a typical kite shape, which means I want the bottom to be a little longer. So maybe we'll do something like this. Mm, no, that's not working. Right, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna make these sort of pleats a little shallower here, but I think I'm gonna cut off some of the excess paper because I don't want the kite to be so heavy that it can't fly. And I also don't want all this extra stuff here to kind of not look cute. You know what I mean? So that's the shape of it right now. So it's almost there. But I'm gonna cut off all this extra. There's a tutorial that I'm gonna link down below. I am only very loosely following the tutorial. <laughs> so pretty much if mine doesn't come out perfect, you can just follow theirs and you'll have a better chance. <laughs> okay, so we have our shape down. It's not looking beautiful, but that's okay. I'm gonna also cut off a little bit extra here just to keep the weight down. And now I'm gonna bring in the kiddo and I'm gonna have him help me tape these down, but also I want him to help me tape the dowels here. So I'm gonna put one horizontally and one, maybe two vertically to kind of help the kite hold its shape. Put this here like that and get more like that and pull right here okay pull and put it on the palito you got it like that yeah good very nice Smush it, smush, 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 smush. Perfect. Ta-da! Wow! What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this, <laughs> I'm so excited. We're gonna put it like this. I know! <laughs> we'll put it like that, and look, we'll put some tape here also. How beautiful! <laughs> it's so pretty! <laughs> Wee, it's so pretty! <laughs> I'm really not sure if between the weight of the dowels and the weight of the tape, if it's gonna actually fly, but we're gonna put some string through the dowels here in a little bit and try it out because it's actually raining right now. But if nothing else, you could just like hang this from the ceiling as a decoration. It's so pretty, it was very easy to make and my son had a really good time with this. All right friends, that's gonna do it for our Mary Poppins homeschool theme. We had a really good time with this theme. It was really fun to get to share this movie with my son. It was one of my favorites growing up and I don't think we've done too many live action movies in this series. So that's always exciting too to try to bring him into that sort of new-ish to him genre. 
We had so much fun with our art activity. I did not think he was going to like it as much as he did, and that seems to kind of be a theme this year. I do the art activities, obviously, because not only is it fun to do art, but because it gives us a chance to work on our fine motor skills, on our problem solving, etc. And so even if he didn't love them, I would still make it a point to do them. But throughout this year, I've noticed just how much he enjoys doing arts and crafts. And that's been really fun for me as a parent, watching him kind of grow and develop in that area. As far as the recipe, it was extremely simple this time, but it was really, really delicious. A very good payoff considering the minimal amount of work. And to be completely fair, to be completely honest, they were not the most beautiful thing. The fact that I had to use a gluten-free, dairy-free cake mix, the color was not as like pure white as it would have been with a regular cake mix. The coverage of the chocolate I had to use was nowhere near as thick and complete as it would have been if I'd used, say, candy melts. But if you have to make the same adjustments that we made, they were definitely delicious and worth the effort, if you could even call it that. Something else you might try instead of doing our spoonful of sugar recipe is you could do a tea party, kind of like the one that we had when we did our Alice in Wonderland theme. So I'll post that video up here in case you haven't checked it out yet. But all in all, we had a lot of fun with this theme. I really enjoyed sharing these activities with my kiddo. And if you're looking forward to doing the same, I would love for you to let me know which activity you most anticipate getting to do with your own kids. And remember, just because we're done with Mary Poppins doesn't mean that the fun stops here because I continue to add to the Pinterest board anytime I come across a relevant craft or activity or even recipe. So keep checking back because the boards are constantly evolving and I do my best to make sure to include things that are suitable for kids of all ages and all abilities. I wanna thank you so much again for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and if you did, I hope that you will please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.